God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you so much. Hallelujah. Praise God. I'm so happy to be in your midst this morning to share with you. And I want to thank the lead pastors uh, for the privilege. Please, can we appreciate them with a clap offering? Daddy, thank you. Mommy, thank you. God bless you. And also thank you, Pastor uh, Frida and the husband. God bless you. Thank you so much. Father, we thank you. We give you glory. We give you praise. Come and take your place, so Lord. Come and take your place, so Lord, in my life. Come and take. Father, we ask, oh God, that you speak to, your, to us in volumes. And we also ask that you bring your word to us with simplicity. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, precious Father. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, can we please turn our Bibles to Psalm 119? I want us to read from verse 100 to 104. Psalm 119, 119, verses 100. If you are there, please say amen. That means a lot of us are yet to be there. Psalm 119, verse 100 to 104. I read, I understand more than the ancients because I keep thy precepts. Hallelujah. I have refrained my feet from every evil way that I might keep thy word. I have not departed from thy judgments for thou hast taught me. How sweet are thy words unto my taste. Yea, sweeter than honey to my mouth. And uh, 104 now. Okay, 103. I take 103 again. How sweet are thy words unto my taste. Yea, sweeter than the honey to my mouth. Through thy precepts I get understanding. Therefore, I hate every false way. Amen. We are looking at divine precepts, or we could even say walking in divine precepts. Amen. It is important that we understand that when we talk about the precepts of God, we are talking about the ways of God. We are talking, we are talking about the tenets of God. We are talking about the code or conduct or the manner in which God brings about his counsel to pass in the lives of his people. Amen. Thank you. Hallelujah. So, when we talk about divine precepts, it also means that we are talking that God, if God is saying I should be here today, it means that I am here now. It means we are saying what he is saying. 
It means we are hearing what he is saying. It means we are going where he is going. And it means we are on the way where he leads. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So it also means that we are following God's guideline. It also means that we are following God's principles. It also means that we are following God's method or God's methodology. Hallelujah. So it is not enough for people to understand divine precepts. But it becomes enough when we are able to understand that after we have known the divine precepts, uh, we trust God that we acquire grace to obey divine precepts precepts are we together please so it is not enough that i understand all of god's methodology i understand all of god's guidelines i understand all of god's principles it is good but then it is not enough it becomes enough when I stay in the place of prayer, when I stay in the place of the word, when I stay in the place of fellowship and communion, and I obtain grace to follow after his precepts. Then I will begin to see the manifestations of the fruit of his precepts. Praise the Lord. So, it is good for me to understand. It is good for me to know. It is good for me to uh, read. It is good for me to understand everything about divine precepts. Uh, but it is more important uh, if the mandate of heaven, uh, if the mandate of eternity will come to pass, uh, that I stay until I get grace to bring about divine precepts in my life, individually and collectively. If we are together, can we say amen? amen? Divine precept also means that we are following the roadmap of God. Hallelujah. It also means that I am following how God had done some things before. Praise God. For those in marketing, for those of us that are even in leadership, you always hear people say that there is no need for you trying to find a way that somebody else has done what? Gone through. Am I correct? Are we together? It is, not, it is a waste of time for me to be trying to understand how to cook a goosey soup. I hope we understand. The reason is because there are a lot of videos on YouTube. A lot of our mothers know this. A lot of our sisters know this. So why should I now go and start praying and fasting for how to cook a goosey soup? Are we understanding? Why? Because somebody already knows it. So God understands that all the ways of a man, uh, that all the plans of a man, that all the thoughts of a man, uh, that all the motives of a man, that all your actions, uh, that all the things you have in pursuit, uh, that in him, he knows you before you were even formed. Praise God. So if he knows you before you were formed, why do you want to form another way for yourself? Praise the Lord. Divine precepts. If we are to go where God is saying we should go, if we are to be where God is saying we should be, if we are to stay where God is saying we should stay, then we must acquire the grace to do that. Praise God. For those of us who have been through uh, the tertiary institution, you understand there's something they call research methodology. Are we together? There's something they call research methodology. It, it talks about how you came about the results, how you were able to get your data, how you were able to go about your questionnaire, right? How you were able to go about all the information you have put together in that book after your four years, after your five years, your six years, or seven years, as the case may be, if a strike strikes help you, right? After you have done all of these things, uh, it means that uh, you are telling us that this is what I have done. That this is how you will test the validity, the reliability, the authenticity of what I have done. So if we will test the 
God, the reliability of where you are going, we must come back and know that you are following the roadmap of God. Please, are we gaining understanding? So if it is indeed, it is God that is sending you. If it is indeed that it is God that is leading you, then it is important uh, when we look at your life, uh, when we look at your life, brother, we look at your life, sister, we look at your life, mommy, we look at your life, daddy, we must be able to trace it back to the precepts of God. Praise God. Because with the research methodology of every renowned researcher, you are able to test how reliable, how authentic that research is. So your life is a researcher. Therefore, we to test the authenticity, the, uh, the validity of where you are going to, we must be able to trace it back to divine precepts. If we are together, can we say amen? Praise the Lord. Ordinary, ordinarily, let's be honest, following divine precepts can be challenging. Are we together? Following the precepts of God can be challenging. It's not as easy as it sounds. Can we look at Isaiah chapter 43 verse 2? Media, you can help me, but if you are unable to, by the grace of God, I should open it quickly. Isaiah chapter 43, verse 2. I am there. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. Through the rivers, uh, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned. Uh, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. Do you know the reason why you are walking after what? Divine precepts. That's the benefit. So when people are clamoring that this place uh, is not a place where people have been blessed, uh, but because you are following after the order of divine precepts, uh, your case becomes different. So you can say, shout and say my case is different. Uh, but your case may not be different if you don't follow after divine precepts. If we are together, please say amen. amen. It is not enough to know the ways of God. Or it is not enough to know divine precepts. Uh, but you must actively engage them for a life of victory. You know, one of the things that has uh, so much troubled us, especially our generation now, is that uh, we know so much that we are doing little. Our daddies, am I correct, please? We know so much. We understand so much. Uh, we have so many revelations. Uh, but uh, when we look at the, the product, the output uh, that it is bringing, uh, it is too little compared to what we are saying and uh, telling people that we know. Praise God. So it is not enough that I understand divine precepts uh, that it becomes so productive uh, even to the God of heaven uh, that I understand how to engage every key where I know how to engage the word. Uh, I know how to engage prayer. I know how to engage fasting. Uh, I know how to engage communion uh, so that heaven maximally benefits from my life. So it is with this kind of mindset uh, that I go out for evangelism. It is with this kind of mindset uh, I come for prayer band. Uh, it is with this kind of mindset uh, I come for choir practice. Are we being blessed, please? Hallelujah. Divine precepts can be known to all. But not all can know the benefits of divine precepts. Everybody can know divine precepts. Every dick and hurry. Have you wondered, if you've been on YouTube for some time, you will see how somebody is trying to defend that there is no God. And you will wonder why. Amen. You will wonder why. 
Is he trying to defend that there is no God? When in, in the real sense, why he's talking, you as the viewer, you may just hear a simple thing that he's saying that is proving everything that he's saying to be falsehood. If you have that witness, please shout hallelujah. While he's talking, maybe a 10 minutes video, a 15 minutes video, 7 minutes, while he's talking, you just see that he just said one simple thing. And this simple thing turns everything that he's saying upside down. So he understands that there is one who sits in heaven, but he does not understand that there is one who rules over the affairs of men and can turn the heart of any king to himself. Hallelujah. So I want to look at why he is walking in divine precepts, challenging. Amen. I don't want to go so much into the, uh, the topic of divine precepts. It's quite wide and voluminous. But can we look at why it is a bit challenging? Number one, I have here that God's ways are not our ways. Amen. Can you give me Isaiah chapter 55 verse 8? God's ways are not our ways. Thank you, daddy. Isaiah 55 verse 8. Okay. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are your ways my ways. Say it who? Say it who? It is the Lord that said it. Hallelujah. He says my thoughts, the way I do things, uh, the way I bring things to pass, uh, the way I understand this world, uh, because I formed it all by myself, uh, they are not your ways. Praise God. How do you explain to Gideon with 32,000 army and you tell him to re reduce them to 300? Does it sound sensible? The ways of God. Divine precepts. Because the ways of God are not the ways of man. Praise the Lord. How do you explain to Abraham, leave your father's house, a man with a wife, uh, with servants, and go to a land where I will show you. God, are you whining me? Yeah, is that not the question we will ask? Or you say, is this playing? Of course. This looks like a play. How do you tell a man, get out of your father's house and go to a land where I will show you? Oh God, you, if you had shown me the way, it would have been better. You have not shown me divine precepts. So you may be here trusting God for something and the Lord is speaking to you. Understand that number one, primarily that the ways of God are not the ways of man. Number two, God's ways are contrary to logic. Amen. I, would, I don't want us to turn there. Second Chronicles chapter 20 and verse 22. God's ways are always, or most times, contrary to logic. Praise God. How do you explain to Jehoshaphat that singing and praising God will win a battle? Mommy. <laughs> Hallelujah. Does it make any sense? Those are the ways of God. Divine precepts at times demands that you come to a point whereby the concepts of God are being revealed to you on a pedestal that sounds foolish to human reasoning and logic. It becomes or it sounds so foolish. So you wonder why Sarah laughed when she got the visitors. How will I put to bed, uh, to bed again? I've gone past the age. That's why she laughed. The Bible says, and she laughed in her heart. Just the way God is telling some of you now that this is what I want to do with you. you are like, God, I don't think you are serious. Amen. Hallelujah. How do you explain that Mary 
who just all of a sudden doing a business, she just saw an angel, and an angel appeared and said, Thou art favored among women that you will conceive and you shall have a son and you shall call his name Jesus. Or guy didn't have sex. Simple biology. Are we together, please? Simple biology. I did not have sex. So how do I conceive? But the ways of God at times can be contrary to logic. It's contrary to your reasoning. It's contrary to traditions. It's contrary to the ways of men. Divine precepts. I want to follow divine precepts. Yes, but you must understand that it is at times challenging because number one, we say it what? That God's ways are not our ways. And number two, we say uh, we said God's ways are contrary to logic. Number three, God's ways can sound or look foolish. Genesis 22 verse 2. Genesis 22 verse 2. All right, I read. And he said to Abraham now, take now thy son, thine only son, Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah. You know the remaining. Thank you, media. And Abraham obeyed, right? You see, at times when you read your Bible, it is important to think you put it like a theme and play it in your mind. Praise God. Put it like a movie. Play it in your mind. This is God telling Abraham now. He said, take now thy son. For Abraham not to make mistake. He said, thine only son. Because how many sons did Abraham have? Two, right? Ishmael and who? And Isaac. He said, take now who? Isaac. Whom thou lovest God knew that Abraham loved Isaac. God. God, almighty God, understands that Abraham loved his son before giving him that commandment. God's ways can sound or look foolish. So you are here. There is that thing there is that thing that God is saying, give to this church, give maybe to this ministry, bless so 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 person, this is this person, and you are saying, God, it. <laughs> no, 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 no. Divine precepts can at times look and sound foolish. If we are gaining understanding, please say amen. amen. That's how the ways of God are. Praise the Lord. The ways of God can sound sweet. When we come out to tell you the testimonies, uh, it can sound so enjoying. When somebody will say, ah, and I woke up every day, I was still praying. No, I was praising for 20 minutes. And I did that for one month. You go and try it for two weeks, you will stop. <laughs> Praise God. And the person will say, and I was just sitting down, and one woman from London, she used to be our neighbor, and she just called me and said, take this. And you'll be like, wow, I'm going to engage this. Then you start day one, 20 minutes, praise and worship. 20 minutes, day two, praise and worship. 20 minutes, day three, praise and worship. It will, it will shock you when you finish, you know, go collect. Hallelujah. Because his ways are not your ways. Hallelujah. I want us to look at two keys to walking in divine precepts. Two keys that will help you to stay in divine precepts. Hallelujah. Number one is be still. Can we echo it together? Be what? Be still. Be still. We live in a world that A, B, C is talking to Mr. Man at a time T to produce X, Y, Z results all in the same place. I will take that again. We live in a world that A, B, C is talking to Mr. Man 
all the uh, within time t within a particular time expecting him to produce x y z and he's still seated in the same place what do i mean turn your television on a sunday morning like this you will see a wonderful movie a movie that has not been shown to uh, maybe on Africa Magic in the last three months or four months. Hallelujah. Turn your YouTube and you will see suggestions. Uh, turn to Facebook uh, and everything is doing what is speaking to you. God is saying, be still. We are too active. Uh, we are too volatile. We are too uh, uh, competitive. Uh, we want to be where everybody is. Uh, we want to say what everybody is saying. But God is saying be what? Be still. Oh, your mates are all have job. Your mates are now working. They now have good cars. God is saying be what? Be still. You are not yet married. Ah, you are over 25. God is saying what? Be still. You don't have a child yet. Of course, are you the only one? Then listen to what they say. All your mates. Are you not part of your mates? Why are you excluded? It means it's not all. Praise God. They say all your what? Your mates. Are you not part of your mates? So you are not included. Is that all? It's no longer all. Until you are included, and every other person with person within your age range is included, then it is all. Praise the Lord. Your colleagues are doing things, and you don't have money to partake, you don't have the resources to join them. God is saying, Be still. I will be still and know you. Our God, when the ocean rise and thunder roar, I will soar with you above the flood. Father, you are king over the storm. I will be still and know you, our God. At times we need to say still. You see, when you stay still, there is a dimension of the grace of God that can be released upon you. And that when you come out, you are coming out like, ah, it will be as if nobody has heard about you. Be still. Hannah waited. And when it was time, only Samuel was better than the seven sons of Penina. Be still. You have not gained admission. Be still. If you want to follow divine precepts, calm down. Calm down. Please preach to your neighbor. Say, neighbor, calm down. Hallelujah. They will tell you, now you only pass. Everybody is doing it. Baby, what? Be still. Because the generation we live in is so uh, acidic that there are so many things that are wanting to eat into the, uh, the, 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 uh, the, the fabric of your spiritual life. They want to eat into the fabric of all that you have sustained. Uh, they want to eat into the fabric of your word life, uh, of your prayer life, uh, and of your faith life. But God is saying that if you want to shut down this voice, these voices, be what? Be still. Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 23. It says, guard your heart with all diligence. For out of it comes what? The issues of life. But we always make a mistake. I always give it this example that in the barracks, when you have, when there is war, and where, or when there is a crisis, that is happening at the moment. It is the responsibility of the army to keep everyone in the barracks safe. Amen. Please listen very well. Kindly pay attention. It is the responsibility of the army to keep everyone where in the barracks safe. 
and everyone that attempts to run into the barrack. Do you know why? Any attempt for somebody who is in the barrack to lose his life is also irresponsibility on the part of the army. So any attempt, most times when we say, guard your heart with all diligence, you always think we are telling you that don't listen to worldly music, don't watch pornography, don't be involved in bed, Niger, don't do this, don't do that. At times, what we are still telling you is that keep the ones you have. Do what? Secure the ones you do what you have. Do you know sanctification? Yes. Guard it with what? All diligence. Let it not leave your heart. If it leaves your heart, you are irresponsible. Do you know holiness? Yes. But if it leaves your heart for masturbation, then something has happened. Guard your heart with what? With all diligence. For out of it comes what? The issues of life. Hallelujah. So, when you are still, they will tell you things like, you know, get sense. Oh. Am I correct? They will tell you things that you don't have the sense of dignity. Can I tell you something? In this kingdom, you don't have dignity. What you have is Christ's esteem. Your esteem was exchanged for that of Christ on the day he died on the cross of Calvary. So when they tell you that you are stupid, you are foolish, you just carry church for head, not only you, tell them that I lost my esteem about 2022 years ago on the cross of Calvary. What I now carry is Christ's esteem. Are we together, please? I have Christ's esteem. That's the esteem that comes as a product of your salvation. Amen. Through Jesus. So it is no longer about you. It all becomes about Jesus. Number two. So the first key is what? Be still. Number two. Okay. Secure God's abiding presence. And that's the theme. Amen. That's why I may not be here, but if God permits me, I will be here one of the days. But it says, well, secure God's abiding presence. When you secure the presence of God, you have secured all that is encapsulated in the awesomeness and the all power that God exhibits on earth. So when you are a man that carries God's presence, what happens to you is that you can obtain everything provided God can obtain it. I'll take that again. When you have the presence of God, everything that God can obtain, you can equally... You only see the ability to obtain anything that God cannot obtain. Praise the Lord. In your quest to secure the presence of God, one of the many things that will happen is that you will walk alone. Praise God. You will do what? Walk alone. And when you walk alone, it may look like you are lonely, but you are not lonely. Because loneliness is not the absence of people. Loneliness, promax, is the absence of the Holy Ghost. Loneliness is not the absence of of people is not the absence of friends but it becomes the absence of what of the holy ghost praise god so every journey you embark outside the divine precepts of god is a destruction that is about to happen it's just a matter of time every journey they tell you you are an SS3 student. Go and write Wayek in the village. Do you know why? So that you will cheat. It's a journey that we end in what? In destruction. Stay under God and write the Wayek in the city. And you will still pass. 
Except if you are not serving the God of heaven and you did not read, that's when you will fail. Hallelujah. You know, our parents know how to cajole us to fall into iniquity. It was done to me. Go to the village, go to Koji State and write Waek. And I ask that, is it that the, the questions they set in Waek, the one in Koji State, is it different from the one in Kaduna? Are they different? So why are you telling me to go to the village? Because your salvation is atmosphere dependent. Your sanctification is atmosphere dependent. And that's why we are telling you, come to Bible study. Come to prayer meeting. Do not forsake the assembly of the brethren. Praise the Lord. Every journey, I don't care how you embark on the journey, provided it's outside God's will, is a dead end. It will definitely end in death. Hallelujah. You will always say that the picture of your future is revealed in the scripture. But can I announce to you that if you don't posture yourself to capture it, you will end in destruction. Are we together? You must posture yourself to do what? To capture that vision you are seeing. And I will stay upon my watch. My watch. Take position. God bless you, ma. Please, can we celebrate our mommy? Hallelujah. We are closing. It is important to know that in your pursuit to seek divine precepts, you must understand that it may come with some challenges. And we have been able to see a few of those challenges. But the good news is that every man out of his sincere desire can actually walk in divine precepts. Are we together? You can actually walk in divine precepts. And my prayer for you this morning is that a dimension of grace for obedience will come upon you in the name of Jesus. A dimension of grace for obedience. Greater grace. Let it come upon somebody in the name of Jesus. The presence of God can destroy and form anything, including you. The presence of God can destroy everything and it can form everything, including you. Praise God. I need thy prayer. Since every passing hour, what but thy grace can foil the tempter's power? Who like thyself, my help and stay can be? Oh, thou who changeth not, abide with me. It's a prayer we need to pray every day. The Lord, I need thy presence. Every passing hour, I need thy presence. Every passing time. Because only thy presence can foil the tempter's power. Only thy presence can destroy the yokes of Satan. Only thy presence uh, can break chains. Uh, only thy presence uh, can give me stability. Can we rise up as we pray shortly? Lord, I need thy presence. Equip me with thy presence. In a rushal and discopadabada, Bante ketetele de bregediata, Shadarin to bragada da 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 baya, Eragada da 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 Kabalada balada 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 balada, Eragada da 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 da, Your presence of God, Kalabon shada balada baya. Shakatoli bregete degede. Barasu degete legete bregete. Father, thank you. 
I want to share this story quickly and we'll take a prayer and we'll close. There was a mountain climber. Please pay attention. There was this mountain climber. He had already prepared his journey to climb the mountain and to break the record. And after his preparation, he did everything possible to ensure that he will have a smooth mountain climbing experience. But while on his journey, it began to become dark and late and the atmosphere was dark. And all of a sudden, from his calculation, something went wrong and this man fell. But while he was falling, he began to think, is this how I will end my life? Is this what the end of my life will be? And in God's mercy, part of the rope that he used, you know how they dress, right? God's hooked to a part of the mountain and he was suspended somewhere in the sky. Please pay attention. While he was there suspended, he cried out to God, Lord, please help me. And he heard an inner still small voice. Do you really mean what you are saying? And he said, ah, God, I'm not joking. Please help me. And while he was there, the voice of the Lord told him, cut the rope. The voice of the Lord told him to do what? Cut the rope. If it's in our generation, we'll say, God, you must be very, very stupid. But that's how the ways of God can be at times. Cut the rope. I don't like sharing the ending part of this story. But I think I'm inspired to share it today. This guy refused to cut the rope. And the next morning, when the rescue team came, they found a man who was suspended in the atmosphere. He died of cold. He died of what? Of cold. So when God is saying that this is the way, please walk in it. Please touch, I beg you. When God is saying this is my divine precepts, configured for your life, walk in it. Can we now take the prayer? Lord, I receive grace to obey your precepts. Shalikos kerazon biata. Bari dombra gadabala dabaka itosita.